Today I want to talk about willful sin. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 talks about a willful sin. And that willful sin will have no more sacrifice for sin. There are many within the church that think that that willful sin is the sin of unbelief. Well, let's go ahead and read it and see if that's exactly what it says. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. That means there's no forgiveness for this willful sin. So what is it? But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fury indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So this is a despising of Moses' law it's compared to. Despising of Jesus would be a comparable way of looking at the willful sin. Despising of his mercy, and they died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorer punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. It's talking about Christians because it's saying that the blood of the covenant, the Son of God, they're trodden the Son of God which they were sanctified. It's got to be about Christians. A lot of people say this is not about Christians. Some say that this is the sin of unbelief, but is it? Let's keep reading. An unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. You're doing spite against the spirit of grace. How was that viewed in other books? Well, it was going on sinning and saying that you're okay. And you continue to live in sin saying that that's the grace of God. And maybe I'll have more sin because, you know, God is so graceful. The more I sin, the more graceful he'll be. That is despising the spirit of grace. So what can this possibly mean? Is it possible that everybody has this wrong and that the willful sin here is the unrepentant sin? Is it possible that the, the willful sin here is the sin that people continue to live in? Are you living in a willful sin? Do you know that you have sin? Are you broken about it? Are you sorrowful? Repentance actually means that you have to turn from your sin and change. Maybe the sin of willful sin here is unrepentant sin. Let's keep reading. In Hebrews chapter 11, it goes on to talk about all these people who had faith. And because of their faith, they did great things. Faith is important. It's essential to the beginning of a Christian life. But obedience, it goes on to talk about in 12. If ye endure chastising, God deals with you as sons. So if you're being chastised, you're being dealt with as a son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Your father disciplines you. Why would a father discipline you? Hebrews goes on to talk about this idea of discipline. The father is disciplining you so that you humble yourself and repent. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. We gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. He for our own profit that we may be partakers in his holiness. So the whole point of discipline is so you would repent so you could be holy and clean. So that you would not be found like Judas who had uncleanliness inside of him. He was a thief and he would steal the money. Because of that, he ended up betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and he died. He hung himself. Holiness is the cleanliness. It's being clean from sin. How can you be clean from sin? Jesus did not say that he just came to die so that you could be free from sin forever and ever without any more repentance. Repentance was never done away with. Repentance is essential. Pastors have forgotten the teaching of repentance. God chastens you and disciplines you so you can be holy. So that you will repent of your sins. So you'll humble yourself in the sight of God and turn from your wicked ways. There is no other teaching in the gospel other than the repentance of sin. Jesus is your high priest. You can come to him. He will forgive you when you ask for forgiveness and you turn. But if you don't turn, don't expect forgiveness. It says in Hebrews 12, 14, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. No man. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. How can you come about having holiness? The Bible says that you're disciplined as a son. So not all sons will end up being holy. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you 
and thereby many be defiled. This is talking to Christians. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Guys, repentance is not just crying and being sorrowful. Repentance, when you find it, you turn away from your sin. There was an object lesson in churches when we were kids. And the pastors would come and teach a lesson about repentance. And they would use a little car, a little kid car. And they would explain this message of repentance. And they said, this is repentance. When you turn around this car and you go the other direction. As there is no forgiveness of sin. The sacrifice of Jesus will not save you if you don't repent and turn from your sin. The point of Jesus and his cross is that you would turn back. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. There is no fear and quaking in the church anymore. The doctrines of men have taken over our churches. The doctrines that you cannot lose your salvation have taken over the doctrine of repentance and turning from your willful sin so you can have forgiveness. We have modified our truths to adapt to a sinful world. The world is telling you you can be okay. You were saved in your willful, unrepentant, regenerate self. But the truth of the gospel is Jesus died so you could be set free. There's a form of godliness that denies the power of God to change you. The world today is full of that doctrine. God can change you, but unless you turn and repent of that sin through God's grace, mercy, spirit of power that quickens you, He gives you His spirit within you to quicken you. You have no excuse to continue in your sins. If you're not hearing God, it's because there's willful sin in your heart, and you're not being forgiven from that. God wants to forgive you. He desires to forgive you. He died to forgive you. His blood washed clean in your life to forgive you. But if you don't have a sorrowful heart and repent and turn from that sin through His blood and the quickened spirit that He gave you, there will be no forgiveness of your sin.